Hi, I'm Ruben Lerner, and welcome back to my Python Standard Library video explainer series. And this time, we are still talking about regular expressions. So I'm going to say import re. And let's say that I have a word like this. Let's say I say name equals Ruben. Actually, let's do this. Let's say email equals Ruben. And I want to know if I can find my name in there. So I'm going to say something like this, re search. In, and I'm going to look for Ruben inside of email. And we're going to say here if m print m group 0 and else print no match. And it says no match. Well, what's wrong? Obviously, like it's looking for my name inside the email address, but regular expressions are, of course, case sensitive. So I could, of course, do a lower or this or that. But another way that I can handle this is with a flag. It turns out that re.search and re.match and re.findall all take a third argument, or an additional argument, I should say, depending on how you're using it, um, that is a bunch of flags. And these flags are defined in the re module. So I can say here re.ignore case. And what do you know? Now it's going to find it. Right now, what does re.ignore case do? re.ignore case is going to tell re.search ignore the case when you are searching. Now, what is re.ignore case? If I just look at it here, it's going to be, well, it's a regex flag. All right, it's a special type of object. And I say, what, you know, what is the type? It's an enum. And enums, of course, are basically, we can use them as names, but they actually have to sort of translate to values. We can see that the value it's translated into at the back end is two. And that we'll come back to this in a moment. If, for whatever reason, you don't want to say re.ignore case, you can just say re.i, and it works exactly the same way. So this time we're going to talk about this flag and a bunch of other flags you might want to use in your regular expressions. Okay, so that's re.i. What's another one we can use? Well, how about this? What if I say here, um, <laughs> yeah, s equals a, b, c, d, new line, e, f, g, h, new line, i, j, k, l, MLP. Okay, and now I'm going to say re.search for, and I'm looking for cd.ef in s. Are we going to find it? Well, let's do our standard if m else no match, right? So we want to look for it. And sure enough, uh, bad news, m, because I forgot to do m equals. There we go. And it says no match. Why is it saying no match? Here I said I want to look for cd, any character, and then ef. And we have here cd new line in EF, aha, but it's not really any character. Dot means any character except for new line. You want to include new line? That's right. We have to say then re dot all. And dot all means, I know you'll be shocked to hear this, we also want to include new line in the dot. Dot actually then represents all character, dot all characters minus new line. Okay, so now we've seen re dot all. Is there a short version of that? Of course there is. And is so obvious that we would call it re dot big S. Big S. <laughs> Why big S? It's not s dot all, is it? So this is, of course, historical, that regular expressions have been around for 50 years or so. And in other systems, it wasn't called dot all. It was called single line mode. Single line mode in the sense that now we can search across multiple lines as if they were single lines. This turned out to be very, very confusing. And so I'm very happy that in Python we call it dot all, but the abbreviation is still dot S. Well, let's look at this a little more. What if I search here for capital C, D, capital E, F? Now we're searching, and it's still not going to find. But we did dot all, right? We did dot all, but we also need to say ignore case. So how can I combine them together? Well, I can say re dot s, pipe re dot i. And then we find both of them. Why pipe? Because pipe is bitwise or. And I want to or them together. I'm going to take this re.s or re.i, and I'm going to get back here. You can see regex flag dot all or ignore case, and we get all together 18. Why 18? Because we're using bit flags here. Because re.s is that bit flag, and re.i is that bit flag. Now you might say, wait a second, I can just add them together. And, and, and yes, you can add them together. re.s plus re.i, and you'll get the number there. So you can do it whichever way you want. It's kind of traditional to use the pipe. Uh, because of the flag aspect, uh, but you can do it a different way if you want. So anytime you want to combine flags, you do it with pipe. Okay, so we've got re.s, we've got re.i. What else do we have? Well, I'm going to read in here words equals uh, open words. All right, and we're going to say here uh, dot read. Actually, I want to do words equals that. So let's just change this here. 
words equals that. There we go. And so now if I say, you know, words up to like a thousand characters, we see that it's our dictionary file once again with one word per line. So we do print words up to a thousand. There we go. So now we have a whole lot of words. Fantastic. So what if I want to do this now? What if I want to search inside words? So words is a string, and it's a string containing new lines. So I'm going to look for something like this. I'm going to say here, re find all. And in words, what do I want to find? Well, maybe I want to find all the places where a word starts with, uh, let's say, a and ends with z. Okay, so I'm going to say here, it starts with a and dot plus ends with z. I'm going to use uh, the caret and the dollar to indicate that I want beginning and the end. So we're going to do this. And we find out it finds nothing, nothing at all. Well, maybe z is too constricting. What if I say e? And actually, I'm not even going to say here plus. I'm going to say backslash w. That's just going to be a little tighter. But we're still getting nothing here. What is the problem? The problem is that the caret and the dollar are actually giving us trouble. They're not saying, I want to find the beginning of the line. They're saying, I want to find the beginning of the string. So what we're saying here is find me all places where the string begins with lowercase a and the string ends with lowercase e. And in the middle, we only have alphanumeric characters. Well, that's just not possible. We've also got new lines in there. What I really want to do is say, no, caret should be the beginning of the line, not the beginning of the string. And dollar should be the end of the line, not the end of the string. Well, for that, I can say re dot multiline. And then we find them. What does re dot multiline say? It says caret should be the beginning of a line, not the beginning of the string, and dollar should be the end of the line, not the end of the string. And then we find all the things that start with a and end with e, which is nice. Are there any that end with z? There actually are. Not a lot, but there are some. It's always fun to look through the dictionary and find these crazy kinds of words. Avalos. I'm sure someone out there is going to know what that means. I don't. And don't you know, don't forget there's avalos and alvalos. Okay, enough making fun of the English language for now. And of course, if I want to combine this, let's say I do here a capital A and a capital Z, I can say re.multiline pipe re.ignore case. And then we're going to get a little more because now we're going to find either capital A or lowercase a, capital Z or lowercase z. And that's pretty good. All right, so we can always do this sort of combination. What other flags do we have? Well, uh, we have only one that I'm really going to want to show you now. Let's say I have this. All right, let's actually use this here. And this, you know, you know, regular expressions are hard to write and they're even harder to read. So let's say someone were to see this. They might not quite understand what I was getting at. What am I looking for here? Well, I'd like to comment. If the only way I can comment is like here, you know, this is a, you know, this is a comment. And it's kind of annoying. Like it'll work, but it's kind of annoying. What I'd like to do is break the regular expression apart and then describe it piece by piece. Well, guess what? I can say here, I'm just going to pipe it re.verbose or re.x if you prefer. And right now, it's not going to change anything. What Ari Verbose says is, first of all, I'm going to use a triple quoted string here. Not because I have to, but because it actually, well, I guess I have to. All right. All right. And then what? Well, triple quoted string lets me put multiple lines there. So then I'm going to say this. All right. What, what Verbose allows me to do is have a triple quoted string here. And then it ignores new lines, ignores white space in general, lets me put comments. So I can say here, you know, string must start with a or a, and then you know, find some of you know, letters, numbers, and or underscores in the middle, and then you know, end with z or z, and we get exactly the same results. What verbose or the you know x uh, option allows me to do is basically write my regular expression spread across multiple lines and then give some comments there alongside it so that the next person who comes to work on my regular expression will be ever so slightly less confused i'm not going to say they won't be confused because these are regular expressions after all but they will be slightly less confused all right so those are the main flags that you might want to use when working with regular expressions you now see what they do you see how they combine and you see how we can use them in real life Hope this helps you out, and I'll be back soon with more of my Python Standard Library video explainer series.